In the news this week, Mark McGowan delivers speech to party colleagues as Labour officially launches election campaign. In other news, One Nation, One Priority, Colin Ticknell's policy tinkering as the fight for Upper House continues. Head to head, the Greens and One Nation candidates to attend a WAMN news election debate. Is here, the Pfizer vaccine finally finds its way to WA. And Australian news media held to ransom by the Facebook ban. Plus, Dr Miller's COVID comment. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lowe and Sarah Smith. Good evening. Those exclusive stories in a moment. But first, a brief report into Labor's campaign launch. WA Premier Mark McGowan made a speech in the RAC arena this morning, officially launching the party's campaign to be re-elected. With polling days coming in less than three weeks, the party is aiming to secure victory for the next four years. Keeping WA strong continues to be the theme of Labor's campaign. Here's a brief highlight of Premier McGowan's speech. The public have, the public have felt a renewed confidence in government. Western Australians looked to Labor and they did not look in vain. I have always felt that WA Labor can and should be a government for all Western Australians. A government that understands the pressures that families face right across our suburbs and our regions. A government for workers, tradespeople, small business owners and professionals. A government for young West Australians and seniors alike. For regional West Australians, new West Australians, vulnerable West Australians, Aboriginal West Australians, socially progressive West Australians. We are the government for families. A government that will ensure that every one of those Western Australians has access to opportunities and is treated fairly and with dignity. So my message to you, if you're thinking about voting for me and WA Labor this election for the very first time, you should feel confident in that decision. My promise to you and every single Western Australian is simple. I will lead a sensible, responsible, experienced government that will keep our promises and properly manage the finances. And we will always keep WA strong. So to every Western Australian watching at home today, if you want a government that makes WA jobs and health its number one priority. It's not just about the pandemic. That's the message One Nation is asking voters to take to the polls. The party's WA leader Colin Ticknell rejected the Greens' claims that the election is about the climate, saying it all comes down to jobs and energy. I sat down with Colin to discuss his pitch to young voters. What's your offering for young voters? Young voters, we've got a lot of things. I think the number one thing is a job. This, this uh, Labor government has failed young voters. And the other thing is long-term jobs. And the way you do that is by offering small business incentive. It's not, we're not talking about the big union businesses or the big miners, we're talking small businesses. Reduce or completely do away with payroll tax. We've been talking about that for four years. Everyone else has been, oh, we're not sure, we're not sure. Also do away with stamp duty on, on most sales now. We have a GST, stamp duty was supposed to go. That will make things cheaper. When you make it cheaper for business, and by reducing some green and red tape, they then can afford to employ more young people. Green's saying that it's a climate election. If you had to summarise one word to go along with the word election, what will it be? Oh, I don't know about one word. I'm not into slogans. I mean, I think the big thing for us, it is not a climate election. I think the Bill Shorten election got rid of all of that rubbish. The Australian pe people said absolute no. And WA and Queensland were the two states that spoke out the loudest about that. So, you know, with Zach now chasing the green vote uh, with his energy policy and chasing other people, I can understand now that we are the only Conservative Party in WA. There'll be a lot of Liberals. Uh, I live down in Busselton. There'll be a lot of Liberals that are saying, well, they've given us away. They've just thrown us away and they're not going to look after people 
you know, that need jobs. But Zach Kirkup's claiming that his renewable energy plan is forward-looking and it creates jobs. Well, that's yet to be proven. What it does do, it puts 700,000 people out of work across Australia if we don't have coal industry. Now, I don't necessarily love coal either. I'm not a fan of the old technologies, but really, realistically, renewables cannot at this stage look after the major energy needs. We know that because across the world, renewables account for somewhere between 1% and 3% of the world's energy. And the other thing that they must remember is that in after the pandemic came out, I remember everyone saying, oh, we've got to get manufacturing going again. We will never will get manufacturing going again in the next 10 or 20 years under renewables because it doesn't work for manufacturing. WAM News Online today confirmed that the Greens and One Nation Upper House members will be participating in a studio debate with a special presentation set to premiere on YouTube at 9am on Sunday 28th of February 2021. Green South West MLC Diane Evers will go head to head with One Nation leader and South West MLC Colin Tinknell as both parties prepare for one of the most competitive state elections in Australia's history. Jobs, energy, cost of living, government accountability and other topics will be the key focus of the debate. In addition, Sunday Evening News and WP will provide debate highlights and analysis at our usual time after 5.30pm on our YouTube channel. Despite the setbacks due to the ongoing dispute between Facebook and the Australian Federal Government, WAMN News Online will continue its service to the people of Perth and the WA community. What we don't get in the main, main, mainstream media is, you know, is their voices, is you know, what's happening in the Greens, what's happening in uh, One Nation and, and what their positions are about various important issues. So I think that, you know, having that, having that voice heard, I think it's really so important. Western Australians are just days off being safer than ever from COVID-19 after 142,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccines arrived in the country this week. Health Minister Roger Cook spoke to the media to explain the time frame for the rollout of the vaccine and called on Western Australians not to buy into the fake news at this critical junction in the fight against the virus. Western Australia is closing in on the finish line of the vaccine, with Health Minister Roger Cook announcing that first doses of the Pfizer vaccine will be administered on Monday morning. Vaccinate our state will be an important operation in making sure that we can continue to go forward with confidence. Quarantine workers, aged care residents and workers and disability workers and residents will be among the first to receive the vaccine. Health Minister Roger Cook urged people to get vaccinated. This vaccine will save lives, it will stop severe illness and it will protect Western Australians. Helene Fong, WAMN News. Labor have revealed that their existing 263 election promises have been independently costed by the Treasury at $1.051 billion. They've also promised more than 177 more election commitments to come before Election Day. Meanwhile, the party has accused the Liberals and Nationals of recklessness, saying they should have had their promises costed before the Treasury deadline. Kit Sanders reports. The Labour Party has scrutinised the Liberals and Nationals in a press release for not having their election promises costed by the Treasury. Labour claims that the Liberals and Nationals election commitments would so far cost more than $10.7 billion and calls their policies reckless and irresponsible spending. Treasurer Ben Wyatt says he suspects the Liberals and Nationals have failed to seek independent costing because they don't trust their numbers and they don't want to be subject to scrutiny. Zach Kirkup held a press conference to announce an election promise to transfer 10,000 public houses into the hands of not-for-profit organisations. He claims that this policy is costed. It is costed. It's already using money that's in the budget and by tra to fast-track these homes and by transferring 10,000 homes to the not-for-profit sector, this is already just using the housing stock we have. Kit Sanders, WAMN News. Facebook is coming to terms with Australia's new media laws following a news blackout for the nation on the social media platform. Australians were blocked from viewing and sharing news on Thursday over the laws requiring Facebook and Google to pay for content. 
a decision that disrupts the WA Liberal Party's election campaign. Political parties have slammed Facebook's decision, but Australia's media union believes an agreement will be struck sooner rather than later. The worst situation for, for smaller organ, news organisations than for larger ones, and therefore it's, it's, it's even a greater dis disadvantage to younger people than it is to older people. Uh, traditional big media favours and is supported by um, um, older Australians. Um, so, you know, the future is in the likes of WIMN, um, and that's what is at stake here if, if we can't come to some proper solution to this issue. Dolphins in Mandras Estuary will be better protected under a Liberal Party commitment for better support for dolphin rescue groups. Party funding worth $250,000 will support volunteers caring for dolphins, including a boat and jet ski for water monitoring and a dedicated wildlife officer desperately needed in the region. Mandra dolphins have been found entangled in fishing line for six months due to lack of resources and the Liberals say the volunteers need support. Which is incredible because we have this unique, extensive inland waterway. Um, so we have no one on the water really as looking out for our wildlife um, with the legislation, etc. So we would just like that to be changed. It's something we've been calling for for a long time. Um, it would, would make a massive difference to Mandra. A 26-year-old man surrendered himself to Queensland police after a 26-hour standoff in which he held a woman and a three-year-old boy hostage in a Sunnybank home. Police first arrived at the scene at 10.15am on Thursday to investigate unspecific serious offences. The woman and child who escaped unharmed are believed to be known to the man. The suspect allegedly armed with an unknown weapon and several heavily armed police were on the scene. Patrol Inspector Michelle Pickett says that while specialist police units were engaged, the confrontation came to a peaceful outcome. An icy vortex has hit the usually warm and arid US state of Texas, leaving thousands without power, heat or communication. Seven people have died of carbon monoxide poisonings as people attempt to use their cars or indoor fires to keep warm. COVID vaccination centres are trying to hand out vaccines before they expire due to loss of refrigeration or centres having to close down. After seven and a half long months in space, NASA's Perseverance rover has landed on Mars in a Jezero crater, where scientists hope to find signs of ancient microbial life. Mars orbit meant that there was a limited window for the rover to make it to the red planet, with only 50% of rovers making a soft touchdown. Perseverance landing is a great feat, opening the door to find traces of extinct alien life and even human travel to Mars. It's amazing the expertise involved in these explorations. And the risk are sky high as well. But the reward's worth it. A lot more knowledge for all of us. We'll recap this week's top stories again in just a moment. But right now with more feature interviews and Dr Miller's COVID comment, here's Nelson with Western Perspective. Thanks guys, hello and welcome to Western Perspective. Well, the WA election is around the corner and the state's political parties are gearing up with their policies in the battle to appeal to young Western Australians. One of those parties is One Nation, which remains sceptical about the success of the McGowan government, claiming there's still a lot of issues that need to be resolved, along with WA's COVID-19 recovery. We talked to the party's WA leader, Colin Ticknell, about why Western Australians should vote for One Nation. Colin Ticknell, thanks for joining us. How are you, mate? How's things? Doing good, doing good. Um, the main question I think a lot of voters will be asking is, why should people choose One Nation, given that Labor's doing such a good job when it comes to coronavirus lockdowns and protecting the state? Well, I don't believe they are protecting the state as well as people think, because they're not talking about all the things they're not doing. If you look at our tracing, our contract tracing, it's very scratchy. We've had uh, nearly 12 months now since we had a real big outbreak and uh, as our tracing is not good. I can't believe that it's not good after 12 months. You know, and, and when we've got no plan for a lockdown, so when the next lockdown comes, because there's bound to be another one, there is no plan for business or people with their work. Uh, and they, they, everyone goes, what are we gonna do? We don't know what's going on. So there's a lot of things that aren't happening. We've got record homelessness. 
we have very, very high unemployment and even higher underemployment. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that he's not doing well. Yes, on the pandemic, all he's doing is following instructions from the health chief officer. Um, and I believe any Premier would do that um, because if he didn't, it would be committing suicide. So I think people have been a bit conned on that. Green saying that it's a climate election. If you had to summarise one word to go along with the word election, what will it be? Oh, I don't know about one word. I'm not into slogans. I mean, I think the big thing for us, it is not a climate election. I think the Bill Shorten election got rid of all of that rubbish. The Australian pe people said absolute no. And WA and Queensland were the two states that spoke out the loudest about that. Mm. So, you know, with Zach now chasing the green vote uh, with his energy policy and chasing other people, I can understand now that we are the only Conservative Party in WA. There'll be a lot of Liberals. Uh, I live down in Busselton. There'll be a lot of Liberals that are saying, well, they've given us away. They've just thrown us away and they're not going to look after people you know, that need jobs. But Zach Kirkup's claiming that his renewable energy plan is forward-looking and it creates jobs. Well, that's yet to be proven. At, at what it does do, it puts 700,000 people out of work across Australia if we don't have coal industry. Now, I don't necessarily love coal either. I'm not a fan of the old technologies, but really, realistically, renewables cannot at this stage look after the major energy needs. We know that because across the world, renewables account for somewhere between 1% and 3% of the world's energy. You know, that's the actual facts. We have to deal with facts. We, we know what we want. We know what we want to happen. Everyone wants renewables to be successful. Do you want it to be successful? Yes, I do. Anyone would. You know, yes. We don't want uh, coal. We don't want gas. We don't want oil. And some people in the world, especially in Australia, it's about 50-50 whether you have uranium. So they do want these new technologies to work. But at this stage, they don't measure up. And what's happening is because there's so many subsidies, that's the taxpayers' money, to keep these things going, uh, energy prices have gone through the roof. Now, last federal election, we, we had a big no to the green and going just 100% green. So Australians are saying, no, we don't want this. There's a big risk, risk by these people. And the other thing that they must remember is that in the, after the pandemic came out, I remember everyone saying, oh, we've got to get manufacturing going again. We will never will get manufacturing going again in the next 10 or 20 years under renewables because it doesn't work for manufacturing. When it comes to the vote preference matter, uh, Liberals and Labor and everyone's having a bit of a muslang at this point, what are the precise details and what are One Nation's precise details when it comes to preference deals with other parties? Well, preference deals, we always are going to put Labor and Greens last. That's a non-negotiable. Um, they've got an ideology that doesn't work for Australians. You know, the Labor Party's given away their workers and have gone very green and are just looking after, you know, I, I would say yuppie latte sippers in West Perth. They aren't representing the workers. So One Nation stepped in there and now doing that. You've got to remember, we had a quarter of a million people vote for us at the last election. That's as many people voted for us as did for the Greens. But where's the evidence of that your voter vote base will increase, isn't it? Do you have, do you have party internal polling suggest that that's going to be the case then? Yes, we do. We do, but we don't rave on about it because it's party in, internal polling. You know, I mean, you can do whatever you like with party polling. Um, polling hasn't been very successful over the last 10 years. So I would say don't put too much faith in it. When you've done a lot of hard work like One Nation has done in the last four years, in Parliament, getting laws changed, supporting good bills, making sure that bad bills get amended or fixed up. That means a lot to the people of WA. That's why they don't want people like McGowan to have control of bath houses. They know that that's a very risky thing and they reckon that that's going a step too far. What's your offering for young voters? Young voters, we've got a lot of things. I think the number one thing is a job. This, this uh, Labor government has failed young voters. And the other thing is long-term jobs. And the way you do that is by offering small business incentive. It's not, we're not talking about the big union businesses or the big miners. We're talking small businesses. 
reduce or completely do away with payroll tax. We've been talking about that for four years. Everyone else has been, oh, we're not sure, we're not sure. Also do away with stamp duty on, on most sales now. We have a GST, stamp duty was supposed to go. That will make things cheaper. When you make it cheaper for business, and by reducing some green and red tape, they then can afford to employ more young people. Hospitality the industry is at you know, desperate need at the moment. You know, all of that area is where most of the young people get their start. And of course, once again, increasing apprenticeships. Not talking about it, not making announcements like Labor and Liberal do, but actually doing it. We secured 2,000 apprenticeships at the last federal election through Pauline's hard work in federal election. That's exactly what we'll be doing. If we get balance of power in this state government, that'll be part of the price that Mark will have to pay to us to get our vote. It will be to get young people working. We want incentives for small businesses. We want a training and incentive programs. We want TAFE training to be cheap, if, if, if not even free, so it happens and we get people working again. And now, here's AMA WA President Dr Andrew Miller with this week's COVID-19 commentary. Hi, welcome to Not Being On Facebook. Uh, good news today, of course, with uh, Pfizer vaccine being initiated throughout Australia. And that will be a very important uh, initial step towards getting uh, good protection for the community so that we can see less damage from this disease long term than we would otherwise do. Uh, it will take some time until the end of October to get the um, adult population vaccinated and we have to make arrangements in the meantime to see what we're going to do about children. In the meantime, it'll be hold the line on our current COVID protections, which of course um, are affecting some unfairly. Uh, my heart goes out to uh, Australians who are stranded overseas who would really rather be here but unable to get back because of the caps at the moment. Hotel quarantine still needs fixing, frontline healthcare staff still need airborne protection and we've seen renewed push uh, against the uh, infection control experts group um, in Australia who are not giving us the protection that we want on the front line in terms of uh, ventilation, N95 masks. If you, have, if you have an opportunity to look at um, carbon dioxide monitoring, simple uh, monitors, easy to uh, purchase over the internet. Uh, it's making everybody reconsider what it means to have fresh air indoors and getting it down under 800 parts per million, very healthy thing to do for all sorts of reasons, but also we think that a lot of these uh, spreading events that have occurred with COVID in stuffy stagnant spaces could have been prevented with a lot more attention on ventilation. Very important that fresh air going through buildings. Have a great week and uh, welcome to uh, the non-Facebook world. That was Dr. Andrew Miller there. And that's all for this week. We'll be back again next time, but for now, it's back to you. Thank you, Nelson. And that's our weekly news and current affairs without Facebook. Until this drama blows over, please go to our website at wamnnews.com.au. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and YouTube for the latest articles, live press conferences and videos. Until next Sunday evening, from Sarah and myself, we wish you good health and good night. Thanks for stopping by. Mm -hmm.